Honda has received an official knee in the gonads, six million of them actually, for being a grubby, incompetent teller of broad-spectrum consumer untruths. This orbits their somewhat underhanded recent dealer boning activities. The brand's commercial destruction in Australia is pretty much a fait accompli at this point. So that's working out really well. I'm Johnny Logan from AutoExpert.com.au, new cars, cheap, Australia only, website, card. The ACCC endured a rare bout of consciousness for just long enough in about April of last year to sue Honda in federal court on the basis that the inventor of VTEC was a misleading, untruth-telling mother lover. A dude in a wig, like not necessarily wearing a wig at the time, but odds on he owns one, named Justice Nathan Moshinsky has imposed a six million Schitzvillian micro peso penalty in conjunction with metaphoric knee o nuts and also to effect high profile deterrence. I, for one, would have gone even further. Doubtless there was a conference call back to Minato in Tokyo where Honda's bigwigs polish sumptuous leather chairs with their corpulent asses. Honda Schitzville would have had to deliver the bad news and request authorization for a payment of this nature. And I would have mandated that conversation be live stream across all social media platforms. I'm kind of funny like that. Details of Honda's big incompetent breach. Next, this report is sponsored by NordVPN. Get four extra months of Nord free now at nordvpn.com slash AEJC. Say you're in a cafe one day and you think you've just connected to the free Wi-Fi. But in fact, a hacker has just inserted himself between you and the internet and he's about to start ripping you off properly. How would you even know? This is called a man-in-the-middle attack. It's one of the most common ways to get hacked. But there's no law that says you have to be the next victim. You need countermeasures, and that's what NordVPN does. NordVPN does the stuff that you and I don't understand in the background. Encrypting your data, hiding your IP address, locking everything down, basically. Go to nordvpn.com slash AEJC now. The two-year plan discount is huge right now. Plus, you're going to get four extra months free. nordvpn.com slash AEJC. Link in the description. Just subscribe, download the app and connect. One click later, your IP address is shielded. Your online traffic is masked with NSA level encryption across as many as six of your devices. NordVPN is the fastest VPN on the planet. It costs only about as much as one cup of coffee every month to keep your data, your identity and your devices secure. Because your location is masked, you'll be able to access streaming and other services that might be blocked where you live. Plus, you can continue to watch your favourite content when you travel. You might even be able to score some great deals on travel and accommodation that are not available at home. That happens all the time. Go to nordvpn.com slash AEJC now, boost your security and enjoy that discount plus those extra four months of free subscription time. It's totally risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. That's nordvpn.com slash AEJC, link in the description, and thanks to Nord for sponsoring this episode. So exactly what was Honda's big breach sufficient to motivate the ACCC to take rather a large dump upon them in this way? Well, back when Honda's broad spectrum dealer boning ceremony was well underway, Honda stalked the shit out of its customers and told them the Astoria, Tynan and Burswood dealers either would or had closed and would thus no longer service Honda vehicles. Unfortunately, what they said was, and there's really no other term that I can think of, it was bullshit, dude. Flat out bullshit. Oops-a-daisy. And by stalked, incidentally, 
I mean they sent emails and text messages and made phone calls. This delivery of these untruths in this manner went on for months upon months. If an estranged husband or a peaceful Woodside protester comported himself in this manner, there would doubtless be an AVO. This was pretty widespread stalking by Honda too. More than 1,000 customers were stalked in this undignified, misrepresentative, deceptive way. Honda Australia deprived consumers of the opportunity to make an informed choice about their options for servicing their vehicle. It also caused likely financial loss to the dealerships by the false claim they were closing or had closed. The substantial penalty sends a strong message to all businesses about the consequences for making misleading statements to consumers. That's ACCC Commissioner Liza Carver, apparently conscious for that statement. The Moshmeister agreed broadly from the bench, saying Honda had been really, really naughty in the context of consumer law, which apparently shouldn't be regarded as optional, even if you're a car maker, and, quote, caused a loss to the dealers by way of loss of business. The not-so-subtle distinction here being that Honda was upending the dealer's franchise agreements, but the dealerships were not in fact closing, and they were, of course, free to service Honda's independently after being boned. Although the contraventions were not deliberate, they were nevertheless serious. The number of contraventions is large and took place over a period of months. Justice Marshmeister there last week in federal court. Not deliberate. <sighs> Dude, not deliberate. I've got a real problem with that and it's not what you think. I'm sure they were not deliberate. Unfortunately, therefore, this absence of intent to deceive can only mean one thing, right? That they were grossly incompetent, like negligently, ridiculously bad at informing their customers about exactly WTF was going on. Brain-bendingly shit at communicating such a simple concept. Kindly note that this is not some... I don't know, for example, a refugee from Afghanistan trying to make a go of a corner fish and chip shop and filling in some official form all wrong. This is a multinational company with a wholly owned subsidiary in Shitsville. It's got a boardroom and a communications team and lawyers, and it's knee deep in managers. To me, this is just a classic Epicurean paradox. If you're not familiar, Epicurus grappled with God and the problem of evil. It's a philosophy thing. If God's omnipotent, according to Big E, she could just, you know, get rid of evil. But she doesn't. So she must be incompetent if she's omnipotent. Alternatively, maybe she's just not omnipotent and therefore evil just can't be fixed. It's fair to say, I think, that Epicurus never got a Christmas card from the Pope he was also on Jesus' shit list, as I understand it. Epicurus, like not the Pope, obviously. I do like a good Epicurean paradox, however, and this appears to be exactly that. We've got either malice or incompetence in play, and I really don't think it's malice. See, I have some respect for liars. Lying is properly hard to get right, like properly hard. You have to understand the truth and actively misrepresent it. This takes cognitive bandwidth to do it well. And this is like a big job. It's very hard to get right. I did not just say that I like liars. I said I respect them the way I respect saltwater crocodiles and funnel web spiders and ex-wives three to five inclusive who are just as formidable. I doubt Honda intended to lie. In Australia, Honda is just dependably, reliably incompetent. The company is presently disappearing up its own anus in a cloud of incompetence, insofar as I can tell. It's a shit decision sandwich, basically, and I think they're rapidly running out of bread. Like, dude, we live in a country where competency is getting rarer and rarer. Incompetence is kind of okay 
somehow. Oh, sorry, mate. Oh, I didn't mean to piss all over your RMs. No wackers. I accidentally took a dump in your missus's handbag. Like, it's all good somehow, suddenly. Shit happens. Incompetence. No worries. However, I would argue, if we don't act now, breathtaking, handbag-dump-taking incompetence is going to be the new median setting, and competence will become what excellence was. The future in many ways can be here right now, to be very clear, um, is solar panels on the roof, charging your vehicle for free overnight. That's what it looks like. See what I mean? Like, it's everywhere. Fundamental incompetence is now normalised. Can't tell what's wrong with charging an EV overnight with your solar fucking array on the roof. Like, no worries, mate. Oh, sorry I took a dump in your missus's handbag. You can be Prime Minister of Shitsville, dude. So, five years ago, back in 2018, Honda sold 51,525 new vehicles in Australia. And they're on track, if that's the right term, to sell 13,300 this year. <laughs> in round figures, that's a 75% reduction in sales. Or another way of looking at this, it's a properly biblical apocalypse, commercially speaking. It's roughly 38,000 vehicles, which they sold in 2018, that they're just not going to sell this year. And it, I don't know, an average of 30 grand a pop, that's a reduction in sales revenue of more than $1 billion. And if there's a local margin of, I don't know, just pulling a number out of my ass, like 5% on those Honda shitboxes, that's about 60 million bucks in quote-unquote profit that they're just not making. And that's just for one year. This year, this is an ongoing trend. Sales are still falling for Honda. This year is down roughly 8% on 2022 so far with no end in sight, and they can no longer blame the pandemic. 60 million bucks kind of puts today's $6 million federal court nut kneeing in perspective, does it not? Of course, if I were Carolyn McMahon, the current holder of the Honda Australia Poison Chalice, I would not be using this information in that fateful conference call back to Monato. Like, yeah, dude, but it's not nearly as bad as the 60 million bucks we've already lost for you this year, is it? Sorry if I pissed on your shoes. Japanese industrialists typically have no sense of humour whatsoever in matters such as this. This is the real cost of incompetence, right? The agency model where you bone your dealers and quietly go out the back door, that's just a symptom. You have meetings, right? And you decide that it's a good idea to price the entry-level Honda Civic at $47,000. <laughs> that's not like totally divorced from reality, is it? You remove from consumers the ability to negotiate on price and thus ensure everyone who buys a Honda today will pay the same sky-high price in a market where everyone else, almost, is free to negotiate. And you sex this up with some marketing fluff, telling people, quote, we've changed for you. <coughs> You describe this borderline extortion as, quote, a joyful experience. Although, to be fair on this, it's never actually explained who experiences the joy during this arrangement. Then you get the intern to make up a nice little golden logo, hashtag ironic, from clip art, apparently, calling it the, quote, Honda Price Promise or the, quote, 
Honda one price promise because apparently you can't decide what this cockamamie arrangement is actually called. Haggle free, that's our promise to you. Indeed, no haggling, yay. Unfortunately, it seems, 38,000 Australian consumers have not been captured by this very clever tractor beam this year, having apparently seen through that unsustainable horse shit smoke screen and elected to buy instead a Toyota, a Mazda, a Hyundai or a Kia and counting. As someone who cut his teeth as a younger motoring journo, getting an intense and very sincere indeed trouser TP every time I drove anything with a Type R badge or an S2000 or an NSX. <laughs> Dude, I am shocked, dismayed and appalled that the inventor of VTEC, the quintessential Nipponese BMW, has let it come to this. Forget the power of dreams. This is the power of incompetence.